It's the Daily Dog. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Dog. Thanks for hanging out with me today. We're going to have some fun today, y'all. It is 420, and I am going back to music by the band Gong. And we're going to have a good time. So, in... Uh, January of this year, uh, January 25th, on a weird Wednesday, I listened to all of side one of Flying Teapot by the band Gong. And when I was preparing for uh, a 420 episode, for the third time, it's my third 420 episode, I could think of no better follow-up option for me than side two of this album, which starts off with the song called Pothead Pixies. So come on, it's we're gonna have fun today, y'all. Uh, I have no idea what is gonna happen in these songs other than just the stuff that I remember hearing from side one. And it's odd stuff. It's really interesting, but odd is my word for it. So I'm curious to see how this continues on. A little backstory. This is the band's third album, and it is celebrating its 50th anniversary in the next month, in May. And this is the first of a trilogy of albums that lay out the gong mythology, which has similar concepts um, to Buddhism, uh, including the adoption of optimism, uh, searching for one's true self, the uh, search for enlightenment, that sort of stuff. Um, the band was formed in 1967 in Paris by Australian musician David Allen and British vocalist Gilly Smith. And they started off with uh, just some psychedelic pop and rock music in their first couple of albums. And then comes this allegorical trilogy that starts with the flying teapot and we follow the adventures of zero the hero the good witch yanni i believe and the pothead pixies from the planet gong um it all uh, hardly makes sense to me and i don't even know if it's supposed to make sense but i found a nice um concise reintroduction to these allegorical characters from a uh an uh, an article in The Guardian from a story they published in 2019. Uh, it says, The Gong Mythos was a fantastical sci-fi narrative involving the peaceful planet Gong, its small green inhabitants, the Pothead Pixies, their uh, healing gurus, uh, and their healing gurus, the Octave Doctors. Uh, the Pixies had propellers on their heads that doubled as aerials tuned into the telepathic transmissions of the radio gnome invisible which was an interstellar pirate radio station and they traveled by gliding in their flying teapots instead of flying saucers and i think that uh, the flying teapots is a reference to drug use potentially even even cannabis so there you have it y'all uh, Gong fans, you probably know more than me, and if you uh, have never heard of Gong, you know even less than me, <laughs> but we're going to have a good time. David Allen is on vocals and guitar. Gilly Smith is on Space Whisper. Didn't know that instrument existed. Uh, Tim Blake is on the synths and vocals. Uh, Didier Mollerby is on the woodwinds. Steve Hillage and Kristen Trich are on guitars. Francis Mose is on bass, and Lori Allen is on on the drums. There are four songs on this side of the album and we're gonna to listen to all of them, starting with the Pothead Pixies. Can't believe that I'm gonna be listening to a song called the Pothead Pixies on the internet, but uh, what the hell, let's do it. Uh, <laughs> here we go, y'all. I am, you are, we are crazy.
panning back and forth. Sounds cool. Beware or be aware. Somebody somewhere has got to be high. Cheers, friends. singing the song it's pretty catchy they just can't give you enough the pothead pixies so we're introducing these um, creatures the pixies they seem pretty groovy to me in tune with each other for that last little section. Back from flats to... Yeah, that's a D on the bottom. Subtonic. So it goes up to G. Good afternoon. Good after nude. What were these people on? I'm serious. That is some weird shit. <laughs> as, as a as a teacher uh, of composition uh, oh, for the for the past fifteen years, I've seen a lot of different types of musical sounds brought to me with people asking me what I think. Uh, normally, you know, in the past it was students, and I and it was my job to help them um, understand where their sounds were coming from and how to better just realize their own vision for the sounds that they wanted to make. And I've seen a lot of interesting experimental stuff. I wonder what will happen if I try this. That's the type of stuff that I don't think I've ever specifically heard. It's really fascinating to me. Uh, we're going to keep going. The next one, uh, we're talking about the Octave Doctors and the Crystal Machine. I believe this one is relatively short, and it's an instrumental. So let's see what this one has uh, in store for us. The Octave Doctors and the Crystal Machine. Here we go. kind of an echo. The tuning is kind of pentatonic to me, almost like a wind chime. Changes.
building all of that layered sound. I wish it was longer. I really do. I wish it was longer. That was lovely. If those are the Octave Doctors and, okay, who were they? I have to go back up to my notes. Who were they in the story? Uh, the healing gurus, the Octave Doctors. Um, if, if that's what they're playing in their, uh, um, in their clinic, I think I could be helped by that. That was quite lovely. Uh, but I don't know what's going to happen next. We get to meet Zero the Hero and uh, the Witch's Spell. That's the name of the tune. And so we've got a, a witch and a spell and, and Zero who is a hero. So <laughs> let's see where it goes. Off we go. Lovely Dublin. Just an open fifth. Sounds like flat six to me. Back to one, E flat minor. Five chord. Nice. Flute's a cool sound to cover that too. It's kind of got a dirty Pink Floyd sound to it, you know? That, that suspended ninth goes down to the five. responding to zero here. Sax players over here, and you just feel like you're among friends, you know? I could swear that I saw it up in the sky. Only, deep, but I never like, knew they could fly. only 
teapots I never knew they had one. So that's the last lyrics that I have for this, and we're not even halfway through the track, so let's see where it goes. Really interesting effects. This must be the spell. The witch. that half step again in the bass. section. They're all playing off each other very well and pacing it expertly. Now you got the guitar coming in. Fun from the sets. Percussion is right on the money. At the beginning of this, I heard that A flat is potentially the fifth of a key. Um, it's like sole A sole, but I think it's still raw dough because they're staying right there. So a little Phrygian um, exploration.
foot tap. And it... And the foot tapping goes away. <laughs> I, I wonder if they just didn't have an idea for how to, to end that one. That's like one of those little riffs that can just go on and on and on and on. Um, fun. Zero the hero and the witch's spell. That was fun. We got one more. And <clears throat> uh, it's a little bit of Daily Doug after dark, I think. Uh, because this one is called Witch's Song slash I Am Your Pussy. So I don't know if they're talking about the character from The Sopranos. Um, no, they wouldn't be talking about uh, uh, Big Pussy because because that show wasn't invented yet, right? <laughs> so I think we know what they're talking about. So let's figure out what this sounds like because uh, I have questions. <laughs> Witch's Song slash I Am Your Pussy by Gong. Off we go. All the episodes to not wear pants. What? The music is amazing behind it. This is Gilly. I'm sure of it. And I read that she wasn't like a gifted vocalist, but can she deliver a lyric or what? She's flying away on her broomstick. New key. Just went right to it. The lyrics in that first part, I am your pussy, you are my tramp, don't want to fuck you, just hear you rap, meow, 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 you can be a cat too. Whatever these people were on, I want a little bit. One time. about this. This is a reprise of verse one. Hell. 
Okay, so he's saying, I love you, I love you, love you, love you, even though you make me freeze. And you say I'm only just a dog who can't control his fleas. I really can't believe that we have never met before. I only want to know you, lick you, feed you. Every bit of fish and chips that I can find to feed you, give it to you. Fish and chips. I like fish and chips. That's the funniest, weirdest song. I, I don't know if they're serious or not. I think they are. There you have it. That's the end of the album, friends. Whew. I don't know. That's the, it's, I, I was going to say uh, earlier on that it, the, they, they remind me well, like from an experimental or jam perspective, almost like a European version of the Grateful Dead. Uh, but they're, they're in a league all by themselves, as far as I'm concerned. I don't think I've ever heard anything else like that. Uh, that's taking allegory to a completely new level. But boy, I can see where people could get immersed in something like that and have it be a uh, almost an escape from any reality that you want to escape from and live in that mythology for a little bit and be just perfectly content to bliss out for a while. Uh, I can understand that. Um so I understand, I think, the ongoing interest uh, in a band like this. I believe in name they're still going. Uh, uh, many of the, mu the original musicians have since passed on. But it's kind of become this sort of ongoing sort of institution, the gong universe, right? Uh, so it's, it's fascinating to, to dive into some of these... Um, these albums and these bands like this uh that i you know b before the first uh, side just really never knew existed and it was some of our patrons that had been asking me to get to this i'm like who the hell is gong isn't that just one of the instruments that you hit like this and it goes you know and <laughs> they're like no they were a band too and uh, we think you'd really dig them well that was a lot of fun and uh, it was a little uh, uh, fun to, to imbibe a little bit and enjoy 420. And the idea, I think, for me behind uh, the day is celebrating the ability to kind of uh, tap into to some herbal stuff uh, occasionally if you need to. And definitely has me feeling good. And I hope that that has y'all feeling good, too. That was fun music. Cheeky, uh, really fascinating <laughs> sounds. And pretty expertly put together, if you ask me. I loved it. Uh, Flying Teapot from Gong. This has been side two from that album. If you want to see my reaction to the first side of it, it's available on YouTube as well. But that's all for today, friends. Thanks for being with me, and we'll see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.